Hi guys, Dr. Gideon here. In today's class, we are going to study fraction, and thereafter we will solve some numericals on it. So without wasting any time, come to the fraction. There are basically three types of fraction: dry friction, wet friction, and film friction. What is dry friction? It is the friction between two unlubricated surfaces. And what is wet friction? It is the friction between two lubricated surfaces which are in contact. And what about film friction? It is the friction between two lubricated surfaces which are separated by the lubricants. For our better understanding, let's take a block on a surface and we are applying a pushing force P on it in this way. Because of this pushing force, the block has acquired a velocity of V in the direction of the applied force. Now if the surface over here is unlubricated, then the friction offered is known as dry friction. Now if we apply a thin layer of grease at the surfaces, then the friction now is known as weight friction. This weight friction is sometimes also known as skin friction. And if we apply a thick layer of lubricants at the surfaces such that the surfaces are separated by the lubricants, then the friction over here is known as film friction. One should note that in fluid mechanics we study this film friction as viscous friction. In engineering mechanics we study only dry friction. Again take a block on a surface and we are applying a pushing force P on it in this way. For our further analysis let's take the free body diagram of this block. Pushing force P is acting in this way. Weight of the block is acting in downward direction. Normal reaction of the ground on the block is acting in upward direction. In order to counter this pushing force, frictional force will act in this way. If we draw a graph between pushing force versus frictional force, then initially the value of frictional force is just equal and opposite to the pushing force till the block starts moving. And the value of frictional force is maximum when the block is in verse of motion. The moment block starts moving, the value of frictional resistance drops considerably and thereafter it remains constant. In this reason, the block is at rest, that's why the friction over here is known as static friction. At this point, the block is inverse of motion and the friction at this point is known as limiting friction. Since the block is still at rest, the value of frictional resistance is equal to the external pushing force. And mathematically it is equal to the mu s into n, where this mu s is known as coefficient of limiting friction. It is sometimes also known as just coefficient of friction and it is represented by simply mu. And this n is the normal reaction. In this reason, the block is in motion. That's why friction over here is known as dynamic friction and mathematically it is mu d into n where this mu d is known as coefficient of dynamic friction and n is again normal reaction. From this graph one should note that coefficient of static friction is always greater than coefficient of dynamic friction. I think that's enough for theory. Let's solve some numericals on it. If 1 kg block is resting on a surface with coefficient of friction of mu is equal to 0.1, a force of 0.8 Newton is applied to the block as shown in the figure. The friction force is we have to find. This type of situation is given. 
external pushing force P is given 0.8 Newton and the weight of the block is 1 kilogram and we have to find the frictional resistance at the surface. To find its value, let's take the free body diagram of this block. External pushing force P is acting over here. Weight of the block is acting in downward direction. Normal reaction of the ground to the block is acting in upward direction. And the frictional force is acting over here. For our convenience, let's draw the force versus friction curve. The value of friction over here is maximum and its expression is mu into n. Value of mu is given 0.1 and we have to find the value of normal reaction. Since the block is stable in vertical direction, so summation of force in y direction must be 0. From here we get value of normal reaction is weight of the block which is coming out 9.8 Newton. If we put this value over here, we will get value of limiting friction is 0.98 Newton. One should note that since the value of external pushing force is less than the value of limiting friction, the block is at rest. That means it is the case of static friction. And in static friction, the value of frictional force is nothing but the value of external pushing force that is it is 0.8 Newton. So option B is correct. Let's solve another numerical. A block weighing 981 Newton is resting on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of friction between the block and the horizontal surface is 0.2. A vertical cable attached to the block provides partial support as shown. A man can pull horizontally with a force of 100 Newton. What will be the tension in the cable if the man is just able to move the block to the right? This type of situation is given. External pulling force of 100 Newton is acting in this way. Vertical tension through the cable is acting in this way. Coefficient of friction is 0.2 and we have to find the value of this vertical tension. In order to find its value, let's draw the free body diagram of this block. External pulling force is acting in this way. Vertical tension is acting in this way. Weight of the block is acting in downward direction. The normal reaction of the ground to the block is acting in upward direction and the frictional force is acting in this way. One should note that the man can pull the block horizontally with a force of 100 Newton and only 100 Newton pulling force is applied on the block. That means the block is in verge of motion. So it is the case of limiting friction. That is, external pulling force P is just equal to the frictional force, which is again equal to the mu into N. Since the block is balanced in the vertical direction, so the summation of force in Y direction must be 0. From here we get, the value of normal reaction is weight of the block minus vertical tension. On putting this value over here we get this and on putting the given values and solving we get the vertical tension is 481 Newton. So option C is correct. Let's solve one more numerical. A block R of mass 100 kg is placed on a block S of mass 150 kg as shown in the figure. Block R is tied to the wall by a massless and inextensible string PQ. If the coefficient of static friction for all the surfaces is 0.4, the minimum force in kilonewton needed to move the block S is we have to find. This type of situation is given. Force F on the block S is acting in this way. 
coefficient of friction for all the surfaces is 0.4 and we have to find the minimum value of this force F just needed to move the block as in order to find its value let's first draw the free body diagram of block R weight of the block R is acting in downward direction normal reaction is acting in upward direction one should note that force F on the block S will try to move the block S in this direction also because of the friction block S will try to move the block R in the same direction that means frictional force on the block R by block S is acting in this direction so the frictional force on the block R is acting in this direction in order to counter this frictional force the wall will exert a reaction force on the block R via string in this way since we have to find the minimum value of force F needed to move the block S that's why it is a case of limiting friction that is frictional force on the block R is just equal to the mu into N since the block R is balanced in vertical direction so this normal reaction is just equal to the weight of the block R which is 981 Newton on putting this value over here we get frictional force on block R is 392.4 Newton now let's draw the free body diagram of block S weight of the block R is acting on it in this way self weight of the block S is acting in downward direction and the normal reaction of the ground on the block S is acting in upward direction and the other forces are acting in this way from our previous calculations the value of frictional force on the block S by block R is 392.4 Newton and the value of frictional resistance offered by the ground is we still have to find since it is the case of limiting friction so its value must be equal to the mu into n also the block S is balanced in vertical direction so summation of force in y direction must be zero from here we get the value of normal reaction over here is sum of weight of the block r and weight of the block s which is coming out this on putting this value into the expression we get frictional resistance on the lower surface of the block s is 981 newton on balancing the forces in horizontal direction one can easily get that the minimum value of force F needed to move the block S must be just equal to the total friction. On putting the values and solving we get it is 1.37 kN. So option D is correct. That's it for today's class guys. If you found my these video useful, chances are my these videos are useful too. So check out these videos and to subscribe my channel just click on this and don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video till end. I really appreciate.